Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Bite Size PD Differentiating Instruction Using Engineered Texts. This is a reminder that everything we are covering in our Bite Size PD is tied to the MTSS framework and we will specifically be looking at evidence-based instructional priorities um, for academics. And um, as we're looking at our planning and scaffolding for students, we'll be um, looking at how WISER can connect to all of this through the areas of writing, inquiry, speaking and listening, and reading and viewing. Our learning intention is, I am learning how to differentiate instruction using engineered texts. And the purpose is to increase comprehensible input for diverse learners. I know I am successful when I can create an engineered text and connect it to WISER. In our time here today, we'll be looking at what an engineered text is, how do we engineer it, what are some examples, and where can you find resources to support you along the way. Okay, so what is an engineered text? An engineered text is a text that is amplified or deconstructed to scaffold for any learner. And we are not just simplifying, but amplifying a text by highlighting the language, pointing out text features, and clarifying complex terminology or concepts. These are all the ways that you can help make a text comprehensible or understandable for your students. Now, this comes from Growing in Language and Literacy by Andrea Honingsfeld. Um, and it is organized by the language level of your MLs. And the recommendation here is to use engineered texts with level three MLs, but I think it is applicable to all students. And while on the front cover, it says K-8, I think this can be used in the upper levels as well. Even um, some of the level two MLs that you have in your classes or for your newcomers um, and level one students, um, you may want to provide more translated passages or con condensed versions of the text, but really this is a scaffold that will help all students access the text in the ways of writing, inquiry, reading and viewing, and I'll also um, discuss ways that even speaking and listening can built, be built into this scaffold as well. Let's look at an example. This example was provided by Beth Skelton, a renowned ML consultant who worked with us this past year. If you'll notice the text on your screen, um, it was derived from a sixth grade science um, a sixth grade social studies unit on early humans through ushistory.org. Um, this passage in particular is on ancient civilizations. So this is what it would look like before it has been, a text has been engineered. You have the classic visual with the caption and a general section heading at the top. When you take a closer look at this passage though, you will see how a text like this can be confusing or challenging for our students. Um, you'll see that the image has something to do with animals and nothing to do with early hominids, um, as mentioned um, you know, in the first two paragraphs. Let's look at this text after it has been engineered. Looking at this text with a different lens, or even a wiser lens, you can see here the first paragraph now has a guiding question as a heading to draw the student in and set a purpose for the reading. And the visual is applicable to the reading. A translation has also been added um, to highlight the term ancestors. 
so that um, students can now see that this doesn't apply to animals um, as highlighted on the previous slide. In this next section, you can see another guiding question was added and a timeline so that students can see um, what BCE is referring to, you know, before the common area compared to now. Uh, a translation added was added um, um, to the, the term pertains to, um, you know, since that's something that may not translate directly for students. Um, also, you can see a description here, uh, scientists who study humans in society for anthropologists, and then scientists who study past human activity from remains for archaeologists. Um, adding in descriptions here can clarify language for, for students um, whose home language uh, may not have a direct translation for these terms. Uh, you can also see that um, the text complexity hasn't changed. Uh, and, and this is what we want. Text engineering provides access to our students. It doesn't oversimplify. We're simply um, sprinkling in some translations and some visuals um, and clarifying language for them. So here are the, um, here's an overview of the steps to engineering the text without, like I mentioned before, changing the complexity, but just making it more access accessible or comp uh, comprehensible for your students. So you'll want to um, chunk the text, and this is by taking um, maybe the key five or six paragraphs of, um, of a reading, maybe a whole chapter, or an, and not a whole novel. You want to just make these into smaller, more manageable passages. And, and think about um, what you want to focus on the most for a, a, a unit. Uh, and there's many ways to, to get access to grade level text. And some of those are adding, um, you know, the guiding questions or headings the, at, to the top of a section to set a focus uh, for, for that paragraph or section. You want to add visuals and thinking maps with cap and captions to support their conceptual understanding. Um, adding a glossary or translations of key terms and color coding to highlight the most important information that you want them to get out of that text. And then, of course, leaving a wider margin on the side so that they can take notes and enlarging the text as well. So what you're doing is teaching your students to skills that they can use independently, um, and it's less text, but more in depth for them. And um, it may seem overwhelming to think that you would have to do all of this uh, text engineering for every time you had a text, um, that you can just have your, you could model, uh, you know, a few paragraphs and then have your students do the rest um, in cooperative groups. And this will get them, um, like as I mentioned before, in speaking and listening um, and engaging in language as they're learning. Um, and they can do the text engineering for other passages instead of you having to do all, all of it. Um, you can assign different sections to them and um, it's reinforcing those independent skills um, for you know, accessing grade level text um, and text structures. Okay, let's look at some more examples. This is an engineered first grade science text, and you can see how all of those um, steps were applied to this. Here is an engineered, I think, sixth grade math example, and you can see how the visual and um, the annotations 
highlight the language in the math problem. Here are some tools um, that you can use with engineering, and I've used them throughout. So for any of the icons that you saw on the, on the previous slides, you can uh, go to the noun project for those, and you can search, search them for any topic that you're covering. And it's really easy to just copy and paste into your slides. And you don't necessarily have to use Google Slides, but I just found that, it, that it's a lot easier to, um, to edit. And then um, even in working with groups, when I've done this uh, workshop for DTL, um, you know, I was able to, you know, look at different group slides and um, support where I needed. Um, and so really you can choose whichever platform you would like to use for engineering a text. And it also helps, um, I think Google Slides also helps with um, checking for understanding with your students. Um, and and um, yeah, that was a big plus for me. To summarize a text, as I mentioned before, for your newcomers, you can use um, you can use the app Text Compactor. And um, really, I, I would just recommend using this only for newcomers so that you, um, you're not modifying or condensing the grade level text too much. But for those students who are new to the country and don't have a, um, a foundation in, in the English language, then um, text compactor might be a better option, especially like if you're going to be translating some texts. And then for translating, um, I just linked in, you know, two of the translators that, that I have used and I think are um, really great resources. Okay, on this slide you'll find uh, some other resources and examples. I included the Padlet from our DTL Summit on engineering the text and then um, some other examples that I've created um, based on resources that, te that teachers have, pro have provided and then some other tips in there for you as well. So the key takeaways on text engineering is one, you're not changing the complexity, but you're just making it more uh, accessible for students. Um, you want to model the engineering and use using one page or a select number of sections or paragraphs rather than a whole uh, chapter or novel. And then have students work in groups to do the rest of it for you. Um, choose a few things to engineer to begin with if you um, aren't comfortable with working with a, you know, a chapter out of your textbook or, you know, longer text, maybe um, you could just engineer the learning intentions and success criteria as I've modeled in, in this presentation for you. And um, the last takeaway I wanted to highlight is to remember that less text, um, you're, you're engineering with less text, but more in depth for your students. And it's they'll have um, more opportunities to access it and also um, will most likely re retain the information more than if they had just, you know, um, read the text on their own. Okay, let's connect back to our learning intention and success criteria. You can see here how I've engineered the text and this may be a starting point for you and just um, engineering your learning intention and success criteria for your lessons. But hopefully now you feel that you can create your own engineered text and connect it to, to Wiser in the ways of writing, inquiry, speaking and listening, and reading and viewing. Thank you for joining this Bite Size PD on engineered text.